You're listening to the Boat Galley Podcast, tips, reviews, and how-tos for your cruising adventure. I'm Nika Waters, and this is Fit to Sail. The Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by FastSeas.com. Plan your next passage using FastSeas.com. Whether you are after speed or comfort, Fast Seas will find the optimum route to your destination. Fast Seas, making weather routing simple. Slow down, slow down. The title of this podcast really could be, Why Don't You Buy a Bigger Boat? Everyone asks us that all the time anyway. We've been sailing Calypso, our 28-foot Bristol Channel Cutter, since we bought her in 1992. Okay, fine. We've been sailing her. We've been working on her. We've been looking at her. We've had her since 92. That counts, right? She carried us when it was just Jeremy and me and our beagle Toby from Texas to Florida, down the Eastern Caribbean, all the way to Trinidad and west of Bonaire, back up the East Coast of the U.S. to Virginia. She carried us as a family of four from Virginia to the Bahamas and the Dominican Republic and back again. And we're currently getting her ready to take us, this time just the two of us, no kids or dog, on the next adventure. Though where that adventure will be exactly remains up in the air. Yeah, she's cozy. The current setup down below has the head under our bunk. This was fine when we were in our 20s, but the bladder doesn't last all night long now that I'm almost 50. There's no way to take a shower down below. I don't mind jumping over the side for the bulk of my bathing, but these days I'd like to make sure I can get clean even if it's not the best weather outside or we're on passage for longer than four days. Jeremy, who's six foot two, can stand up only under the hatches. So why not buy a bigger boat? One that has, say, a dedicated space for a head and a shower down below with an actual door that closes. One that has, say, standing headroom all through for my vertically endowed husband. Why not spend the money, save the effort of an interior refit, and get something more comfortable? Believe me, we've discussed this one to pieces. We've chased boats on Yacht World, flirted with the idea of weekend trips to even go see some of them, and exchanged emails with a builder. I send Jeremy links to interesting-looking boats when they flit like fairies across my screen. Heck, I showed him one this morning. There just aren't a lot of boats that fit our criteria. Boats that look gorgeous and unique in our eyes as we dingy away from them in an anchorage. That's props to Don Casey's This Old Boat. If you haven't read it, go grab a copy. Boats that sail well. Boats that can carry sufficient supplies for the passage making we plan to do. Boats that are simple and robust. Boats that offer substantially more of most of these items than we already have with Calypso, which means we're looking likely at boats in the 40-foot range. Boats that won't require a mortgage. Here's what it comes down to for us. Comfort is in more than just space. Comfort is in knowing the boat. I know where to store things, how to access them. Jeremy installed the engine, installed the water maker, ran the wiring. I can hoist the main by hand. No need for a winch until that last bit of tightening. We've got our anchoring hand signals down, know the routine about how to tack, and we can put a full coat of topsides paint on in an hour. Comfort is in knowing the issues we face. Any boat that would fit our budget, the budget we've settled on, that will enable us to sail for a long time, will have to be one that's older, one that likely requires a lot of work. We already know the work that Calypso needs. Any new-to-us boat would come with challenges that we don't even know. We might spend a whole lot of time and money on a different boat and realize that she doesn't work for other reasons. We've had enough experience with cruising on Calypso to feel reasonably sure of our projected budget, though of course healthcare and health insurance is the hugest unknown factor out there. We're also practical enough to know that at some point we'll no longer be able to live on the boat. We want to have a cushion for that eventuality. This isn't to say that we won't get out cruising and decide we need a larger boat. We are keeping that possibility in mind. But maybe, with the changes that we're making to the interior of Calypso, we'll find that cruising in her is as possible now as it's been since 1992. When we first bought our boat, we were, and remain, heavily influenced by Lynn and Larry Pardee, whose philosophy is go small, go simple, and go now. Other boats on our shortlist back then all were in the 30-foot range. They were all boats we could afford, not only to buy, but to maintain and cruise on. The choice we made back then has stood the test of time. I know that a lot of people listening to this are thinking we're nuts. 
I'm not sure if I were making the decision as a boatless person right now, I would choose something quite as cozy as Calypso. But there is deep value in changing the question from how big a boat should I buy to how small a boat can I make work for me? Only you can answer that question of how big a boat should I buy. It's a matter of comfort for sure. I just encourage you to think about comfort from a whole lot of angles other than just boat length, because they all matter. Your boat may have a separate head and shower, but when we share an anchorage, we'll still see the same sunset. See you out there. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for the Boat Galley Podcast, and reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Bye.